Hi you guys, it's me Shantae and welcome back to Shake It Up with Shantae. If you've been here before, welcome back as always and thank you. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome, welcome, welcome and thank you as well. Today I'm going to be showing you guys my easy peasy way of how I make my squash casserole. Yes, how I make squash casserole. It's very simple, very easy. Without further ado, let's shake something up. All right, you guys, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need some plain old yellow neck, cricket neck squash, plain regular yellow squash, some onions. This is probably about four medium-sized squash. You know, not the great big ones, not the little baby ones, the medium size. So you're probably going to need about four of those because this is four of those. Basically, I just washed them off and I cut them. Really, I cut this one because this is the tip. I cut that one kind of thick, but the rest of them, I sliced them very, very thin. I also have a whole onion right here, regular size onion. No, I'm sorry. This is a big onion. This is a very big onion. I cut the whole thing up. The more onion, the better. You're going to need a sleeve of Ritz crackers. If you want to put more, you can. You're going to need um, a couple of eggs, about a half a stick of butter, your choice of cheese, whatever kind of cheese you like. That's what kind of cheese you're going to use. I have some Parmesan, some mozzarella, and some Gouda. I also have a little bit of cheddar that I'm just going to use up because it was in the fridge. You're also going to need some sour cream for this recipe, a little paprika, some salt, some onion powder, garlic powder, basil leaves, dill wheat, and a little bit of black pepper. So first thing first, I'm going to turn my skillet on over here because I've already um, cut and washed my squash. So I'm going to turn this on to a medium-high heat. Yes. Cast iron skillet it is, that's the best thing to use. If you got a non-stick skillet, you can use that as well. But I find my cast iron um, to be best for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put about a half a stick of butter in there. I'm going to go ahead and put my onions in there. This is a really quick, if you do the prep work, this is very, very simple. Very simple recipe. I'm going to let my onions and butter cook down a little bit. Oh, I forgot one thing. Y'all know I'm always forgetting something. I forgot my um, minced garlic. I'm going to get that out and let that cook in here as well. So as you can see, I like onions. If you like plenty of onions, I would say do about um, half as many onions as you have squash. I have some minced garlic here. That's about two tablespoons, tablespoon and a half of minced garlic. I don't think I'm gonna put any water in here. It all depends on your skillet and what you use. I think the last time I made this, I used a non-stick skillet. So I didn't really have to put any water. Once I put the lid on, it kind of sweated its way because we are gonna drain or strain all the um, liquids off of this once it cooks. So I let this cook for about um, two to three minutes by itself before I add my squash. So let me cover this. Meanwhile, let me tell you guys, this is a um, a recipe that's very versatile and everything is substitutable. I say that all the time because it is. Everything is substitutable in this recipe. If you want to do squash and zucchini, you can. That's a great thing, squash and zucchini. If you want to do um, purple onion, um, versus the regular white or sweet onion, you can. If you want to put chicken in the mix of this, you can. Whatever different kind of cheeses you want to use, you can. Why? Because it shows squash casserole and you can do what you want to do. So, you know, this is a very versatile recipe. I just choose to just do it the regular traditional way because I got some ribs in the oven, some baby backs at that. I will be eating with this. So, you know, this this is a great side dish for whatever it kind of puts you in the mind um, of mac and cheese just a little bit um so this is a cheaper way versus uh doing macaroni and cheese and it's a great side dish and this also can be done um vegetarian this can be done vegan you know you just get the right stuff i ain't vegan i ain't vegetarian so mine got all kind of fattening stuff in there all right so we're gonna get back to this <laughs> All right, so I got my onions over here cooking. Let me check on them really quickly. It's going to tell me if I need a little bit of water. Um, not quite sure. I don't think I need water. So I'm going to just give that a few, bit, a few more minutes, and I'm going to add my squash. All right, so my onions has been cooking for probably about four minutes, not quite five minutes. I did add about 
a fourth of a third of a cup of water to this. I did because I think it was kind of trying to stick a little bit. So I did add a tad bit of water to it. So it has sweating down to the point why I like it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add my squash in here. It doesn't have to be uh, a certain way. I just like to lay mine out like this because I want it to cook very, very thoroughly through. So I want to lay it, kind of spread it out. If you want to chop your squash up, you know, half this size or you want to dice them up in quarters, you can. Just make sure you let them cook all the way through to the point where they're soft. And this is the way I find it doing this way. Um, it cooks evenly. And make sure when you're doing this, you cover this so that it can sweat. You don't want it on too, too high and you don't want it on too, too low either because it's going to take too long. But make sure you um, cover this. Make sure it has a little liquid at the bottom so it can kind of basically steam or whatever it's going to do. At this point, you can add a little bit of salt if you like to make it sweat a little bit more. I'm just going to add a tad bit of salt. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do to this. For right now, I'm going to cover this, let it cook down for about 10 minutes. Then I'm going to come back after 10 minutes and see how far it has gotten. All right, you guys, so it has been now approximately 10 minutes. This has been cooking about 10 minutes. See, it has um, it has um, cooked down, but it still needs to cook down a little bit more. And you see how much water is in the bottom of the skillet? That's a, that's a good thing. Now, due to how much squash you have, it's gonna determine how long you have to cook this. So you basically wanna cook it till it's tender enough where you can see that, okay, once I mix my sour cream in there, my milk, my eggs, it's gonna be able to combine together. So that's what I'm I'm waiting. I'm letting mine cook down to get to that point where I can say, okay, it's ready. So this has been going now for about 10 minutes or so. I'm gonna give it another five more minutes and then it should be ready in five minutes. We'll be back in five minutes. All right, y'all, my squash has cooked down. Most of the water has cooked out of it, as you can see. And um, I have this cooking on like a medium high heat the whole time, um, kind of in between the medium high and a medium low heat. Um, so it's ready. I'm gonna turn it off, take it to the sink and strain the remaining water out of it. Give me just one second. All right, y'all, so I let my squash cook down. As you can see, once this stuff, once it cooks down, it's not really a lot. It cooks down. I mean down. It really cooks down. So um, just be mindful of that. If you have a big family you want to use, like I said, I used four medium-sized pieces of squash and I used one whole large onion. So if you have a big family you want to cook this for, you might want to up your squash at least to about six or seven. I had four, so it only made this amount which is perfect for me because i really don't want any leftovers or maybe just a little bit so i can take work tomorrow but that's it all right so i'm gonna go ahead first and season this up i'm gonna put some garlic of course put some onion powder even though you have fresh onion fresh garlic still ain't nothing like honey adding you some garlic powder and onion powder there's nothing like it some black pepper and like I said, all of these seasonings are substitutable. You know, you put what you like, what you want to taste. This is dill weed. Got some basil leaves. I'll put a little bit of salt. All right, now I'm going to add my milk. Let me put a little butter in here. This is my other half a stick of butter. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that down in there. I've used a whole stick of butter so far, y'all. I'm gonna add this butter in there. Okay. One one other ingredient, ingredient y'all, that I forgot to tell y'all was milk. I, I forgot about the milk, but 
I have three fourth cups of milk here that I'm gonna be dropping my two eggs down in just to make sure um, that since the squash is hot, you don't just wanna crack your egg and put it in there because your egg will scramble and you will have scrambled eggs inside your squash. Go ahead at this point, y'all, and taste it just to see, make sure it's seasoned enough. And then don't forget that you have to add your um, your um, crackers, grits, saltine, salted, unsalted, whatever you wanna add. And right here, I'm just putting my two eggs inside of my milk. So right here, I'm just mixing my egg and my milk in here together. I like to do this, y'all, and I like to let it rest for just a second. And you know why I do that? Just in case a shell drop down in there, by the time I get ready to pour, it'll be sunk at the bottom. So I'm going to put about a half a cup of sour cream. I'm going to go ahead and add my crackers to this. That was a little bit more than half, but that's okay. I'm going to wash my hands really quickly. Don't over salt your casserole because of the fact that you have to put those saltine crackers in there. Saltine are rich and they have salt on them, so be mindful of that. So I'm gonna put about a handful of Gouda. And I'm gonna put about a handful of mozzarella. Just like so. Now I'm gonna take my egg mixture. Mix this right in. No shells. All right, and I'm gonna stir this. I'm gonna set this in the oven. I have the oven already on 350 because like I said, I have some baby back ribs in there that I'll be eating with this. But um, I think those are almost done, but I wanna boost it up to 375 for this and cook it for about 35 minutes. All right, let me get my pan and I'll be pouring this in. Spray your pan down. Whatever kind of spray you like, or olive oil, butter, whatever you want to spray it with or put in there. And I'm using an aluminum pan, that way I can toss it when I'm done with it. And I'm just gonna pour this right in here. Just like that. Mm. I'm gonna take some saltines, some more crackers. Well, these are rich. I keep calling them saltines, but same difference. All right, so you wanna mash this down in there, just like that. You want to take you some more cheese and top it off. That's not going to use this extra. I have some mild cheddar here. I wanted to use it up since it's been in the fridge. Use that little bit. And I'm going to add me some Parmesan with that on top. I'm not going to cover this or anything, you guys. I'm not going to cover it. I want my top to get a little crispy, so I won't cover it. And that's it. There you have it, folks. Stick it in the oven, 375, 35 minutes or so until your top gets golden brown, and then you're ready. All right, you guys, I have left this cook in the oven. I'm so excited. It smells so, so good in here, y'all. Oh, my goodness, it smells so good. I'm ready to dive in this thing. Look, I just took it out the oven like 
two minutes ago, not even quite two minutes ago, and it's done, and it cooked for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, mine, mine's were done. It was done about 25 minutes on 375, and it was done. So I'm about to dig into this, y'all. Let's dig into this. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Look at that. Look at that cheese. Oh, let me just get a little bit more. Mm. Because I know I'm going to eat this. Y'all, I'm going to eat every bit of this. Woo! Woo! It's hot, y'all. It's hot. Look at that. Look how good it looks on the inside. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. Woo! Lord have mercy, Jesus. Hmm. Look at it. Get into it, y'all. Get into it. Get into the cheesiness. The ooey gooeyness. Look at that cheese. Ooh. Look. Okay, y'all. I'm about to taste this. I'm about to taste it. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. It's hot, y'all. I ain't got time to let it cool down either. This here tastes so good. If y'all ain't like never had a squash casserole, y'all better make you one. I'm telling you. You don't know what you're missing. Mmm. 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 The cheese, the gouda cheese, the sour cream. Mmm. 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 Mm, 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 mm. The crackle, y'all. Mmm. That's not good. Let me tell y'all. Like I said, this can be done in so many ways. If you like yours a little bit more wet, a little more cheesier, you can do whatever. People put cream of mushroom in it, cream of chicken. Do whatever. That floats your boat. If y'all have not tried a squash casserole before, make sure you try it. If you're watching this and you have not done so, go ahead and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up just because. Don't forget to turn the notification bell on. So every time I upload one of these easy peasy, cheesy recipes, you'll be notified. Until that next video, you guys, I'll see you later.